Hello, Actor Sage here on the Sage Channel, and really quickly, this is a simple introduction to the Space Engineer's building code for small ships. This is basically going to go over what you need to have a small ship built to code. Now, this code, I should point out, is something I've come up with, but I believe it's the proper way to build small ships if you're going to have a basic small ship built for survival. Remember, you can deviate from this code whenever you please, and, of course, there's going to be certain times where you do not want to follow this code, such as beacon ships, relays for antennas, and, of course, suicide crafts and the such. With that said, let's get straight to it. One of the most important things you're going to need on a small ship to be to code is a reactor. Now, mind you, some ships can actually supplement a reactor, large or small, with a battery. If you do install a battery in your ship, there's one very important caveat, and that is that you have to have either a solar panel or a connector on your ship. This is because the battery cannot simply charge itself without connecting to a ship with a proper power supply or have a solar panel to gain energy from the stun slash stars. If you do put a reactor in your ship, remember you're going to need a conveyor system. I'll cover more of that later on. Carrying on from the power supply of your ship, you're going to need thrusters. To be exact, you're going to need a bare minimum of six thrusters. This is enough for one thruster in every single direction, forward, back, left, right, up, and down. This will ensure that your ship does not drift out of control at any time. And if you've already put uranium into your reactor while building your ship, this will also prevent it from drifting while you're actually working on it. Next up is a gyroscope. This is also very important for controlling your ship because this actually controls what direction your ship is facing when you're controlling it and it'll prevent you from bumping into your ship while building it and causing it to spin out of control. Next up, you're going to need a conveyor system. Now, I say you're going to need this. The truth is smaller and simplistic ships don't need a conveyor system. There are ways that you can put your ship together where all the components will fit together without you needing to use a single conveyor pipe. But most ships are, well, stretched out or different in some way where the components are not right next to each other. So what you're going to need to do is get yourself a lot of pipes, big and small, and put them together. Now, the reason this is listed on 2Code is because you have to remember when building a conveyor system that you have to make sure the large connectors, the 3x3, are connected to other large 3x3 areas, and that there are large pipes going from such things as missile launchers, welders, and grinders, all the way back to a large cargo container or a connector, all following the same 3x3 large connector path. You cannot go from a large to a small if you're going to be carrying missiles or other large construction components to these machines on your ship. If you simply have a small ship that maybe only has an oxygen supply, these small pipes will be more than enough to carry oxygen and also ammo for Gatling guns to those systems. It is also advised that if you do have a conveyor system to transfer things around your ship, if you've tied your reactors directly into these and you do not have a way to access your reactors from the exterior of your ship, you're going to want to probably put a small reactor somewhere where you can get to it from the outside of your ship. This is just in case you ever find yourself in a spot where your main reactors have run out of fuel. This is a starting reactor. You can basically put a small amount of uranium in there to bring back online your conveyor system because your conveyor system will stop working if you don't have power. This is also very important if you've built your ship without putting in uranium in your main engines. You might need to put a starting reactor on the outside just to get it started. And then of course you can remove this starting reactor once those reactors inside are running. But remember, if ever you find yourself out of fuel, you're probably going to have to re-add one. Next up is a very important component, which some people might have suspected me to put higher on the list, but you can actually save this component for pretty far down the line if you don't expect to be moving this ship for a while. This is your cockpit. Now, the cockpit is advised to be hooked into your conveyor system. Most cockpits have at least one, maybe two small connections on them, and a, usually a large connection on the back or bottom of them. This will allow you to connect in oxygen either through a large 3x3 or one of the small ones. That way, when you're sitting in the cockpit, you will remain oxygenated. As I said earlier, if your ship doesn't have an oxygen system, you don't have any reason to connect this conveyor system up to this cockpit, such as a simple combat craft or scouting craft. You can forego a cockpit completely though, 
if you decide to install a remote control block. Now it is advised, but not recommended to meet code, to have a remote control block inside your ship as well as a cockpit. That way, if ever your cockpit is destroyed, you find yourself respawning somewhere else, but still with an antenna range of that ship, you can go ahead and remote control it back to your base. Now, if you install a remote control block, you must, to meet code, also install a camera. That is, if it's going to be a drone. You can install a remote control block without a camera if you intend to never remote control and only use this basically to turn back on your inertial dampers if you've lost control of the ship. Now, to do any of these things I mentioned, you're also going to need another piece of the code, which is an antenna. No matter what, you must have an antenna on your ship. Even if it is a stealth ship, you need to have an antenna on your craft. Now, for this to be to code, you must also name the said antenna, and you must also go into the information tab after you've gone ahead and ensured you have ownership of everything, and name the ship itself. All of this is very important for if you happen to get out of the craft while its inertial dampers are off, you'll be able to use your control panel to access the ship and turn on its inertial dampers by selecting the cockpit or remote control block and just turning those inertial dampers on usually. Also, it is very useful for double checking systems if anything seems to have go, gone wrong while you are not near the craft. Remember, if you do have one of these on a stealth ship, it is simple as dragging it to your hop bar and then toggle it on and off from there. But remember, you must have an antenna on your craft to meet code. Moving on from there, we have oxygen. Now, this is actually not necessary for a lot of ships that are going to remain near base. In fact, if you are sure you're going to be the only one using your ship, you can completely avoid having an oxygen system inside your small ship by carrying oxygen tanks in your inventory. Whenever your character's oxygen levels get low, it'll automatically take oxygen out of these tanks and into your character's suit, even if you're currently sitting in a cockpit. Now, it is advised, though, to be to code to actually add at least a oxygen tank onto your ship, just in case somebody else decides to use your ship and doesn't carry oxygen tanks within their inventory. This will also allow you, in theory, to be able to refuel those oxygen tanks that are in your inventory using this machine that's in your ship. You can avoid having an oxygen tank in your ship also by having an oxygen generator. Now, the dangers of having an oxygen generator is the fact that you have to actually transfer ice into this and convert that to oxygen. And it'll convert it to oxygen as needed. It will not just convert it all to oxygen unless you have an oxygen tank, in which case, of course, it'll just store it in the oxygen tank. Now, the main danger of this is if you connect to a larger ship to get some ice out of it, if that ship has its own oxygen system and a storage tanks, it may have already converted all the ice stored there into oxygen. So it is actually advised that you go with only having an oxygen tank inside your ships, unless you have an actual mining craft, in which case it is a good idea to have an oxygen generator as well as an oxygen tank. That way it can convert some of the ice it is gathering directly into oxygen and actually keep itself going perpetually. Next up, we have connectors and landing gears. If your ship doesn't have an oxygen supply and doesn't have a battery, it's simply maybe a scout ship around your craft or maybe something very simple as that, maybe a racer even, you actually don't need to have a connector on it. You can simply have a landing gear. Landing gears are known to be dangerous currently in the game, but you're still going to want to have one of those on there just so you can dock it and keep it stationary at times. And also mainly if you decide to jump a large ship so that your small ship can jump with that. You can forego having a landing gear though if you install a connector on your ship, which I actually advise most ships, if they have a conveyor system, to have a connector. This is, allows for easy transfer of supplies, such as missiles and building components, into and out of the ship, as well as easy transfer of mined materials from a mining craft, as well as the transfer of oxygen and battery power to your batteries. The last part of the code is actually unfinished blocks, and the fact that you should not have any unfinished blocks on your ship. Now, unfinished blocks can be extremely hazardous if you've built pieces attached to them, such as on the inside of your ship if you have blocks you haven't welded up, and then a actual important component such as your, let's say, gyroscope connected to these unfinished blocks. If the exterior hull of your ship is finished, it might still be breached at some point, and then any amount of damage will simply destroy this unfinished block and leave your gyroscope free floating within your ship, causing all sorts of havoc. It is also better on your game's performance, believe it or not, to actually complete these interior blocks because they take up less polys once completed than the unfinished versions. Anyway, guys, that is it for the Space Engineer's Building Code for small ships. I'll do another video in the future for large ship building code, which will cover 
larger open areas in your ship, which we want to attempt to avoid, and also making sure you have back braces and oxygen systems set up to close and seal doors and such things as that. Anyways, that is that. Thank you a bunch for watching, or at the very least listening, and I shall speak to you again next time. Ta-ta.